Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. HP kindly sent me their Pavilion 17T. Now I have reviewed the 15 inch and if you haven't seen that one, make sure to click up here. But I, I, that was much improved from the 2018 model, which I tested, which did get hot. Um, so basic design is much the same now. I'm not going to do the unboxing um, because there's not much in the box. Plain cardboard box and what you get, laptop and a 200 watt power brick. Nice, nice big power brick and what's powering Inside this, you've got a 1660 Ti. Now it's a Max Q, it's a 65 watt Max Q. On the website, I think it says it's just 1660 Ti, so be careful of that, it's Max Q. But it does perform fairly well, as you'll see in a few minutes. Um, CPU 9758, six core CPU, and it's got, uh, it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. You know, I up, uh, opened it up, I'll show you that in a second. And I put uh, an, uh, an extra dim in this, so I'm running 16 gigabytes on here just to to even out the playing field. It's got a 256 gigabyte SSD with an open two and a half inch slot so you can uh, upgrade the storage there to your liking. It costs $960 which I think is a fair price. Now panel wise you know it is a uh, 1080p IPS panel 60 hertz so yeah you, they're cutting some corners there to uh, give you um, you know that price base but so 60 hertz but it is a nice panel as you'll see in a second as well. But as I said it's all plastic build, just like the 15 inch, you know, plastic lid and plastic base. And it does smudge a lot. It's going to be difficult to keep clean. You're going to have to be wiping it down quite a bit. And of course you have the HP emblem appearing in the center. And uh, of course, as previous with the 15 inch, you get the central hinge here. So make sure to open up centrally here because otherwise you're going to put a bit of stress on that hinge then. It could end up being a weak spot. And uh, once you're inside, you've got the Bang & Olufsen speakers up here. And they actually are fairly decent. I quite did quite like them. Now, you don't have any dedicated button to, uh, to activate the, the Omen control center, the software. You have to download that software from the Microsoft Store. Um, so there's no dedicated button there, but there's no fan control or anything like that. In fact, no lighting control. You'll see in a second here that it's all green lighting that's just one color but you can control the brightness of course <coughs> and the keys themselves are painted uh, painted green and of course inside here you know it's all plastic too and again it smudges quite a bit as well so the keyboard on the pavilion is green only whilst on the nitro 5 it's red only and there's no dedicated button here for activating any of the software whilst there's of course on the nitro you've got the end button here. But other than that, they are pretty similar. Now, one thing to note is it's a fair bit of flex inside the keyboard here, and it does feel quite rattly, particularly around this area at the touchpad. Now, it uses an Elan touchpad, and it tracks okay, but it, you can click all the way around the edges here at the top as well, so it does feel quite rattly while it's much more solid feeling on the Nitro. And uh, backlight bleed, it's not too bad. Bit at the bottom left and right hand corners at the bottom there, but not as bad as the uh, Nitro 5. And it's weight, six pounds, seven ounces, and with the power brick, seven pound, 13 ounces. So on the right hand side, at the back, we have the power connector two USB 3.1 type A ports and a combo headphone mic jack. And here on the left hand side, we have a HDMI port, a third USB 3.1 type A port, Ethernet jack, a USB type C port, no Thunderbolt of course, but you can charge up your devices there, it's got power delivery. And we've got an SD card reader, that types of card, accepts the card all of the way in. Around the back, it's a fairly clean look, no ports, just the word pavilion painted on the back. So the things of note in the BIOS, and we have uh, the SGX, the Intel Software Guard extensions. We can actually have that enabled, uh, software controlled or disabled. And if you enable it, it'll take uh, some uh, system resources away. But it's good to have that option there. And in the configuration option, you do have uh, the ability to have the fan always on or disabled the action key so that's the uh, the f keys there if you want to change the brightness and so forth so you don't have to press the fn key and also 
uh, ability to uh, charge um, using the USB ports when the computer's in sleep or hibernate mode, and also adaptive battery op uh, optimization, so it helps protect the battery life. So running the Ada64 stress test on the CPU, the FPU, the cache, and the GPU. And it's been running for about 20 minutes or so, but the system is pretty unresponsive. It's not struggling, it really is. And it looks like the temperature was up to about 80 degrees and about 2,500 megahertz, but in reality, the system is very unresponsive. So here we have Far Cry 5 running for about uh, 30 minutes. And the CPU's hovering around about the 80 degree mark. Uh, and it's holding a good 45 watts. I wish more manufacturers would do that uh, with the CPUs. And uh, the clock rate, you know, it's, it's okay, of course. About 3,700, and I've seen it up to around 3,900. So it's holding fairly decently. And the GPU as well, 67 degrees Celsius with 98% utilization. So that's pretty good. So testing Far Cry 5 using the inbuilt benchmark, the uh, Pavilion 17T got 74 FPS, and that was fairly respectable. This is using ultra settings. And in comparison, the, uh, the 1660 Ti and the Asus Strix GL531GU, that was tested four months ago. So the drivers may have affected a little bit there, but that was only about 12% uh, faster, which would probably, you, you know, one would expect with that being a, a proper 1660 Ti. Um, of course, the 1660 Ti and the Zephyrus G, that was tested some time ago but that was uh, quite a bit further back, so not bad performance. And here's some uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 footage using high settings and of course the Vulcan uh, API. You know what, it's, it's not doing too bad, about 35 FPS and you know, the temperature of the CPU, perfect, you know, it's less than 70 degrees. Of course, it's about 23 watts, it doesn't use much watts in, the, in this game. Uh, but the you know, GPU is 98% utilization with a fairly decent clock there, so not too bad. So in Battlefield 5, you'll see the CPU holds a nice 45 watts, which is great. And the, the clock rate of the CPU is, is generally around about 3,500 megahertz, um, 77, 78 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty sweet. And also the GPU, fairly good deep, uh, utilization, around about 97%, decent boost clock, and again, great temperatures. All in all, it was very good to play on. And uh, using fraps to measure the frame rate in Battlefield 5, again, of course, with Ultra Settings DX11. Um, at the bottom there, we got the 85 FPS, and I think that was a great performance. Now, this is on the Rotterdam map, and uh, you consider that the 1660 Ti in the Asus Strix GL531GU was only marginally ahead. Now, granted, that was four months ago, and drivers have probably improved that, but I did test the Max 15 just the other week using the same drivers, and that's the 2060, of course, and that's only 13% uh, faster. So I think that's an admirable performance by the Pavilion 17T. So let's have a look at the thermal image of the uh, Pavilion 17T. Um, it's really pretty cool. Center of the keyboard is the hottest, 40 degrees. And as you move around the back, you can see some of the hot air being uh, blown, blown out of the back there. And underneath, again, a manageable 40. See 45, 46 there, the hottest spot. But, you know, generally it's pretty cool. So I think, you know, for $960, it's a fairly decent laptop. They're going to have to cut a few corners to get to that price level. It's a Max-Q GPU, but that being said, you know, it ran really well. It was only, what, 12% uh, behind uh, the 1660 Ti in Far Cry 5, and, you know, 13% uh, behind the, uh, the 2060 in that Max-15 in Battlefield 5. And I, I ran a couple of campaigns here on, uh, on the Rotterdam map, and, uh, you know, it ran pretty well. And, it, you know, the CPU ran cool. I like that, 45 watts. I wish most manufacturers would do that. Uh, so it boosted up nicely, stayed cool, and the, the GPU was cool as well. So I couldn't fault that at all. There's no fan control, but the fans were fairly quiet. And I'll, of course, I'll measure all of this and put it in my, my, my full review. And the screen, I thought, was also a decent quality. A 98% of sRGB, for 60 hertz panel, it's not bad at all. So anyway, put in the comments below what you'd like me to test for the full review. I'd like to, to thank you for watching. Bye.